So for this session, we will talk about your financial reporting system. Your financial reporting system is the last system in your government accounting. So in your financial reporting system, generally, we dwell with your financial reports or the generation of your financial reports. So uh, what you will expect in this particular topic are the items of your financial reports. Uh, generally, these are your different trial balances. Uh, after your trial balances, this, uh, we have your different financial statements. Okay? So those are the items that you should expect in this particular topic. So let's start and define first what is your financial reporting system. So your financial reporting system is known as the uh, preparation and submission of trial balances, financial statements, and other reports needed by fiscal and regulatory agencies. The subsistence are, subsystems are as follows, the preparation and submission of trial balances and other reports, the preparation and submission of financial statements. So we have two types of uh, items in your financial reporting system. So the trial balances and your financial statements. So later we will learn uh, the items under trial balances and what are the reports, including the items under your financial statements and what are the reports. Let's start with your trial balances and other reports. So of course your trial balance is prepared to show the quality of your debit and credit. You already know that as part of your financial accounting. So uh, the difference here is that there is a requirement under the law to create trial balances monthly, quarterly, and annually for national government agencies. Unlike in a business, the trial balance is only prepared um, generally at the end of the uh, year or the annual year, but in your government agencies, they prepare this monthly and they will create quarterly and finally an annual trial balance and other reports. So what are the purposes of trial balance? So the trial balance is prepared to first prove the equality of the debits and credits after posting. So after you generate all your journals and you post them to your ledgers, you get the total of your ledgers and you now plot that in your trial balance. So you see if ever the total debits and credits are equal. Because if they are unequal, then we have a problem. The problems either arise from a uh, wrong entry of amount or uh, transposition error or the error in which the decimal point is misplaced. So those errors are uncovered here in your trial balance. Next, you also check the accuracy of posting. When we say accuracy of posting, the posting of amounts to the proper account and to the proper column of debit or credit. Number three, to uncover errors in journalizing and posting. The same, uh, if you look into the equality, you can uncover errors. And lastly, it will serve as a basis for the preparation of the financial statements. Actually, um, it is, yes, the basis, but it is the post-closing trial balance. Now, when we talk about trial balance and other reports, these are the items within it. First, of course, your trial balance. This is your unadjusted trial balance. So when we talk about unadjusted trial balance, these are uh, items of your trial balance before posting of adjusting entries. Next, we have your adjusting entries. So under adjusting entries, what happens here is we now record your different adjusting. So accruals, deferrals, uh, bad debts, depreciation, etc. And then after you create your adjusting entries, you will also post it to the ledgers 
Now, after posting, you can generate your pre-closing trial balance. So take note of the term used here, pre-closing trial balance. Unlike in financial accounting, what we use is adjusted trial balance. Here in your gum, it is called as pre-closing trial balance. Why is it pre-closing? Because it contains both your uh, assets, liabilities, and equity, including your income and expenses. In short, it contains both real and nominal accounts. And then we now create your closing entries. What do we close? Of course, close the nominal accounts. We need to close the nominal accounts. So when we talk about closing your nominal accounts, what uh, we close are the items of your income or expenses. So items of income or expenses are closed. And then lastly, post-closing trial balance. In your post-closing trial balance, what is left here is your real accounts. So post-closing trial balance, what's left are your real accounts. So only real accounts in post-closing trial balance. So still the same concept, uh, just different as to the term especially in adjusted trial balance now it's pre-closing trial balance next we talk about your financial statements so financial statements and their supporting schedules are the products of the government accounting process so when we talk about government accounting process those are up to your receipts disbursement etc these are the principal comprehensive means by which the information accumulated and proposed in the state accounting system is periodically communicated to those who use them. So the items within here are first your statement of financial position, next a statement of financial performance, then statement of changes in net, net assets or equity, statement of comparison of budget and actual amount, statement of cash flows and notes to financial statement. Let's start first with your statement of financial position. So whatever is the concept you have learned before in your financial accounting under your uh, statement of financial position is the same. You can still uh, classify them as either current or non-current. However, difference here is the presentation or preparation of financial statement uh, as to your financial position because there are two uh, financial positions that can be prepared here. The first one is your condensed statement of financial position. And then next we have your detailed statement of financial position. Okay. So in your condensed financial, uh, condensed statement of financial position, what is presented here are only the major accounts, major accounts. While in your detailed statement of financial position, it presents all accounts. Presents all accounts. Okay. Again, in your statement of financial position, uh, whatever are the concepts as to the current or non current, we still uh, use that term. However, uh, we prepare two types of statement of financial position here in your uh, GAM. The condensed statement of financial position, which, present, which presents only the major items, and the detailed statement of financial position, which presents all accounts. Next, we have your statements of financial performance. So your statement of financial performance, of course, uh, shows to you your income and your expenses. So whatever is the result of your receipts system and your disbursement systems, are generally placed here in your financial performance. So the concepts you still know as to your uh, financial accounting is the same here in your statement of financial performance. Next, you have your statement of changes in net assets or equity. So here, instead of equity or the capital or the shareholders' equity, we show your net assets so the net assets is based on the initial net assets plus any surplus or deficit 
uh, in your financial performance, instead of net income or net loss, we call it surplus or de deficit. Surplus if income, deficit if loss. The surplus or deficit, of course, is carried over in your net assets or equity. So the beginning changes, uh, including any surplus or deficit. Next, we have your instatement of comparison of budget and actual amount. This is new here in your GUM. So this statement shall present the original, original budget. You compare it to your actual amounts, and you disclose. You disclose the uh, differences. Okay, you disclose the differences. So, in the comparison of budget and actual amount, you compare the original amount. When we say about original amount, these are your approved appropriations, your final budget amounts. You compare that with your actual amounts, which you use during the current period, and you now disclose the differences. So the difference happens based on a basis differences, time differences, or entity differences. When you say basis differences, uh, this is as to your accounting basis. There is a disclosure on the difference due to a basis difference if there is a difference as to your accounting basis. So let's say in the budget, what is used is accrual. However, in actual amounts, what is used is cash basis. So there is a difference due to that uh, basis difference, okay? Another uh, reason for your difference is your timing differences. Um, whenever the budget period, let's say it should be on March, However, the actual is on June. That is due to timing difference. So there is a difference as to amount because of timing difference. And the last type of difference is your entity differences. So when we say entity difference, what happens now is entity omits this whole program or project. So let's say in the budget, there is a program entitled as feeding program. However, uh, during the actual uh, operation, that was not accounted, that, that is not accounted, or that particular program was not pursued. Therefore, there is an entity difference, okay? Again, what are the three differences as to the comparison of budget and actual amount? Basis difference based on accounting basis. Example, in the budget, it is accrual. However, in actual, you use cash basis. Next, timing differences. So in the budget, it is based on a different time and in actual it is used on a different time also example budgeted on may you use only on june etc etc and then the last difference is your entity difference this occur whenever the program or the project is totally omitted now by the entity we call that entity difference okay so that is your statement of comparison of budget and actual amount and then we have your statement of cash flows it's still the same uh, concept. We have your operating, financing, and investing activities. It's still the same. Whatever you have learned in your financial accounting under PAS 7, you follow that in your statement of cash flows. And then we have your nose to financial statement. So this is quite different, of course, up to your nose to financial statement. So why is it different? Because uh, in your financial accounting, we have various we have various items of your uh, disclosure depending on the type of your standard or whatever is the standard use. But here, um, there are four main classification of your notes. Four main classification of your notes. And what are the four main classification of your notes? So the first one is your disclosure as to your routine disclosure. So the customary disclosure based on PPSAS. And then another disclosure of your changes in accounting principle. So routine disclosure. So the first one is routine disclosure. After your routine disclosure, we have your uh, disclosure of changes in accounting principles if there are changes. 
Uh, another is your disclosure of subsequent events. And then lastly, we have your disclosure of your accounting policies. Again, your routine disclosures, then your disclosure of accounting principles, then your disclosure of subsequent events, then disclosure of accounting policies. Next, the responsibility for financial statements. So who is responsible for financial statements? Generally, in your uh, financial accounting, the one who is responsible for your financial statement is your um, the owner. Okay? The responsibility is rest, it rests to your owner. However, in your government accounting, the responsibility rests to your reporting agency management, or that is the head of the entity. So head of the entity, head of the entity. So whether it is an individual entity or it is a multi-department entity for a single FS, it is still the head of the entity jointly with the head of the finance or the accounting division unit. Okay? Jointly with the head of the finance or accounting division unit. That is for the responsibility for the FS. Next, we talk about your qualitative characteristics. So in your financial accounting and reporting, your qualitative characteristics are either uh, your uh, enhancing or fundamental, right? If you still remember, we have two types of qualitative characteristics, fundamental or enhancing. When we talk about fundamental, that is your faithful representation and your relevance. And then when we talk about your uh, enhancing, we have your comparability, verifiability, timeliness, and understandability. However, in your, in your government accounting manual, we have 11 qualitative characteristics. Okay? <laughs> so this is quite different with your financial accounting. Actually, this is based on your old, old, old uh, conceptual framework. It's actually the same with your old conceptual framework. However, uh, if you still remember, your conceptual framework in your financial accounting was changed recently in 2018. That's why we have those branches as fundamental and enhancing. However, in your GAM, we have 11. So whatever you know in your qualitative characteristics, the same. Understandability, relevance, materiality, timeliness, reliability, faithful representation, substance over form, neutrality, prudence, completeness, and compatibility, they are the same. So whatever you know before, quite the same. Walang pinagbago. So when we talk about understandability, of course, it is understandable if ever the users will comprehend its meaning. That is understandability. When we talk about relevant, uh, relevance, the information is relevant if you can make use of that information in decision making, particularly in uh, determining the past and future events. Next, uh, when we talk about materiality, if ever its omission or misstatement could influence the decision of the users. So this thing, whatever, whatever concept you have learned before in financial accounting, the same concept. Uh, timeliness, it is timely if ever it is available to the users uh, within a certain period. Reliability, if it is free from error. Uh, faithful representation, if ever it represents transactions and events faithfully, and in substance. Substance over form, this uh, talks about the transaction and event is presented to what it purports to be represented. Neutrality, free from bias. Prudence, this is a degree of caution in exercising judgment, if you still remember. Um, there is a term usually used in prudence also. 
Uh, this is also known as it's better to understate your asset than overstate it, or it's better to overstate your liability than understate it. If you uh, still remember that concept, it is quite the same with your prudence principle. Next, we have your completeness. Uh, it should be complete. Everything is presented. And then comparability, it can be compared inter and intra-comparability, inter to other agencies, intra with the past reports. So those are the qualitative characteristics of your financial statements. Miscellaneous items into your financial reporting, departure from PPSAS. So as a general rule, you cannot depart from PPSAS. As a general rule, no departure. no departure okay as a rule you cannot depart from ppss however um you can depart if ever if you use ppss it results to misleading presentation it's the same with your past one do you remember past one or, or presentation of financial statements under financial accounting uh, as a rule you cannot depart from the standards unless it will present a more reliable information. So the same in your PPSAS. You cannot depart from PPSAS unless it presents a misleading presentation, or in short, it will present a more relevant information. As to going concern, uh, the same concept in your going concern, you look whether the entity will continue its operation in the foreseeable future. Uh, consistency, you must be consistently presenting items uh, yearly, year in, year out, the same presentation of items, unless there is a change of presentation as prescribed by your PPSAS. And then we also have We also have your uh, offsetting. If you still remember past one, under past one, it says that you cannot, uh, you cannot offset items. So under GAM, you cannot also offset items. Under GAM, you cannot also offset items, okay? Unless, unless it will reflect the substance of the transaction and it is permitted by PPSAS. So under financial accounting, the same rule. The same rule under your offsetting, right? So what is the rule of your offsetting under your financial accounting? The rule is that um, you can not offset unless the standard permits. So in GAM, also the same. You cannot offset unless permitted by PPSAS. And then lastly, the reporting period. The reporting period is annually, at least annually. However, as I told you, uh, you report monthly, quarterly, and annually. And the monthly and quarterly reports are known as interim reports. They are required at, in a, at any given period at a financial reporting period. That's it for your financial reporting system. Again, it's still the same. Mostly the same with your financial accounting. Difference only is the comparison of budget and actual amounts, including the qualitative characteristics. All other else are the same.